Okay, now after this if else another important thing for us is loopings or loops. Python also provides very easy and uh, intuitive ways of uh, writing in the loops. Suppose let us say I want to have 10 numbers and I want to print them one after another. So, this is like I have to do this printing activity 10 times repeatedly. So, for this we can say n is assigned a number 10 and uh, when n and we can write 10 printing statements for uh, by decrementing the value of n. So, this we can simply do by while n is positive that is achieved by the statement n is greater than 0 and you end it with a colon here and then print this number and then you reduce it by 1 and uh, and uh, and this while continues still n is greater than 0. And when this is done and when n becomes a 0 here the while statement is not correct the, so it will come out of this and then it is print it is done now and uh, this is how the output will look. Now, range operators so often like when you are doing this looping we need to decide how many times you want to want to loop it and all for that uh, range function comes a very handy its format is uh, if I want to loop let us say a uh, certain number of times what I have to do is I have to tell what is my starting point, what is my end, to end point and how much is the jump size. So, okay. so, starting point here will say what is the initial value of i, i is going to take a different possible values here which is which uh, I want to take in my um, my range that I am going to specify and here end point is simply the uh, last value that I, I want I to take and usually this last value is excluded when when I am assigning these values to i and jump size is basically the difference between the consecutive values of i. So, for example, if I want to um, print the numbers from 1 to 10 with a jump of 2 all I have to do is for i in range 1 to 10 to 2 print i and when I execute this you see that I will see the value 1 3 5 7 9 and uh, here anyway uh, 10 uh, is not printed because after 9 if I have to do a value of jump of 2 it is going to be 11 which is not in my range. Suppose let us say I make it 1. Now, you see that the starting value is 1 and it is incremented the value of 1, but the last value here is only 9. This is mainly because as I said the last value is skipped. Okay, I is not assigned the last value 10 here. And now, you see that every time a print command is executed a new line is automatically inserted. So, because of that you are seeing it as a column. In case you do not want to do this Python provides this option to add this end equals to white space. If you do this you will get the things written in a horizontal way uh, in a row and uh, if you want to just uh, see what we did in the previous cell. So, now this column is written as this row here. Okay, now creation of the list. A list can be created simply by putting them between two square brackets and separating them by commas. Okay, here I have created uh, five items numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and uh, so this length function gives how many elements are there. Okay, first uh, this is this give me error here because I did not execute this cell uh, and uh, that is why it did not know what is my list. So, now I have executed now I am coming back and execute this now it shows what is fine. Okay. Now, there are many functions which makes manipulations of the list very handy in Python. 
One thing is uh, append function. If you want to append a new element to this list, all you need to simply do is mylist.append and add the number you want to append. And if you do this and print my list, you see that a new element is getting attended at the end of my list. Uh, similarly, we can insert new values at any place, not at the end, maybe at any place. Here I am trying to insert at the third location a number 40. And if I do this, you see that 40 is coming here. So notice that indexing always starts from 0. So here when I say third means actually in the list it is like a fourth position because indexing starting from 0. So if this is a 0th position 1, 2 and 3 and the 3 is where this is where the 40th has come. And uh, removing is also as easy as, as adding at any place. If you want to remove a particular element wherever it is in your list all you need to say that number to be removed by using this function remove and it gets removed. And also it is easy to get some part of your list by saying if you are only interested in the first three elements all you need to do is uh, just give a colon and three here and you will get these three elements. And similarly if you want interested in only the last three elements so you need to do minus three and uh, give a colon okay so this comes very handy this minus things like so that you don't need to reverse any of your uh, list we uh, python will automatically take a ref and uh, read from the end and uh, reversing if you want to reverse the list all you need to do is colon colon minus one is what to, to do and uh, your list can get automatically reversed you see that it has been reversed here and uh, to add or to append to list all you need to do is write a plus symbol between them and if you do that you see that two or like maybe concatenation happening here like when you use plus on a list the concatenation happens and uh, the two list get merged and uh, if you want to do some element wise operation in your list then for loop operations comes pretty handy like now here let's say you want to multiply every element in your list by 2 so then you can run through each element in the list and multiply that by a factor of 2 and print it so if you do that you see that there were 6 elements and each of them are getting by multiplied by 2 and uh, this uh, first six elements are here multiplied to and listed here okay this numpy is one of the very useful libraries in python which help us to deal with the arrays so obviously when you have to do a lot of data data may be put you have to put it in uh, uh, matrix format to manipulate them and uh, this uh, numpy library comes as very handy and if you want to use this uh, library in your coding first you need to import it and uh, the option to import it is simply import numpy and all the time you don't want to use uh, numpy maybe you want to use a shorthand and so you can even give the name like uh, the shorthand name here is np okay now using this function maybe we can now create arrays so okay so now see here when i executed this 21 cell number 21 here it throw me er error because i have not yet executed this uh, previous cell here so it don't know what is np at so let me first execute this um, cell so my cell is executed now my python knows what is uh, np now i can use that to create an array and now see like i have created an array of elements one up to six and when i print it it shows me as an array okay so let's see what was the difference between the list and the arrays here so earlier i had created a list if i print that list you will get these numbers one two three four five and now when i created this uh, array it uh, 
and uh, so here okay what I have done is basically I have converted my list into array and now it shows me as an array okay. And now we can also create matrices like the way we created list here I have created one matrices which is a 3 cross 3 matrix the here I have put numbers 1 2 3 in the first row 4 5 6 in the sec second row and 7 8 9 in the third. So the rows get separated by these commas and uh, elements within a row are written within the square bracket with each element separated by commas. Okay, and now whatever this um, matrix I have I can convert it to an array again by using NP array. So let us see this. So when I have this um, array matrix created here this is what I got but when I want to convert it to an array you see that I will get this. So what is the difference here when I convert it to array all the commas get removed and they have rows are now appearing one below the other ok. And now if I want to see what is the type of uh, this my matrix here it will show it as a numpy array. Okay. Okay. So when we are doing to do with this matrices and list, we have to be very careful in indexing them and know what convention Python follows to index them. And as I said, indexing always begins with zero. So if you want to access a particular element in your matrix or array, you should be properly indexing them or like a properly uh, use the right index to get those elements. For example, if you have an um, mm -hmm. A, what is A for us so far? I have an A here which is uh, defined as an array here, right? And uh, it is an uh, numpy array and I want to get the elements in position 2 to 4. So I have if I want to that I can give this as a 2 to 4. So notice that 2 here means actually the third position ok and uh, I want till the number 4 but uh, by convention this last index is dropped. Let us see what I uh, what I get. So if I execute that uh, a elements between 2 to 4 it will show me the value 3 and 4. So 3 is fine because the position 2 actually uh, the index 2 actually corresponds to the position 3 where 3 is there and after that we have element 4 and uh, this 4 actually index 4 actually corresponds to position 5 but that is not displayed here ok. So it is only taking when this is basically taking difference between these two indexes and uh, that difference is that many elements it is showing here. Okay, now in this array if you want to see the last, uh, last three position we have to simply do minus 3. This is the same thing we did also for the list and the same thing works for the matrix also. Sorry, uh, same thing works for uh, this uh, numpy, num, numpy arrays also and uh, if you want to look into the particular element suppose I want to look into the 0th row and the first uh, and uh, I want to let us say uh, 0 1th element of the matrix then this is same as saying I want I am interested in the 0th row and the first column and uh, that one for us is this is let us say 0 I throw and first column this one. So this is uh, yeah this one. So I should get a value of 2 here and if I want to print only the second row I have to pass on the index 1 and uh, write a colon here and I will get only the second row and if you similarly I want to get the second column I have to uh, put the colon here and pass on the index for the column as simply 1. Okay. Like range function we used 
earlier numpy has similar function which is uh, a arrange array arrange maybe array range uh, that's what that a has come and uh, here if you want to print the elements like okay if you want to get the store the elements between 0 to 10 in a you can use the this uh, command a np dot arrange 0 comma 10 let's execute this and see what happens now if you do this see you are getting all the values from 0 1 to up to 9 so notice that uh, this is because this is now an array you don't say comma between them comma between the numbers here and again uh, the last number is not displayed hmm. okay now if you want to see only certain parts of this elements let's say i want to see that uh, only three dimension only take a uh, three elements that are equally spaced between 0 to 10 you can use the command np dot lin space and here this is your range and you have to give this number 3 here represent the spacing between them and uh, you are going to get this value uh, 0 5 and 10 but here you see that the last number 10 is also included because uh, we wanted uh, spacing to be and we wanted three numbers which also uh, are equally separated okay and uh, here you see that this dot here what this dot mean here this is basically saying that this number all this number got saved as floats okay so because of that you see that uh, instead of uh, uh, even though this one two three four five are all can be simply integers but because of this spacing you did now they are stored as float numbers and you are going to see a dot here okay now instead of uh, you putting all the times the numbers into lists or uh, arrays you can you sometimes you may have to deal with some randomly generated numbers you want some random numbers and uh, for that this random functions comes handy that is there in the numpy so if you want to generate let's say two random numbers which are uh, between the interval 0 1 then you can use the rand function and give how many numbers of some numbers of that random numbers you want and that will generate let's execute this so here when i execute this uh, a this command and print its value you will see that i get two numbers which are between 0 1 and these are randomly generated how it generated random numbers we have discussed in the course maybe uh, like it uh, mm, it uses uh, uh, inversion uh, sorry like uh, maybe like uh, we discussed various possible methods of generating this uh, random numbers uniformly in the interval 0 1 right we said uh, linear fish re registers and um, I think uh, other uh, methods of the shift based on the shifts we discussed uh, so maybe it will implement one of those methods and generate this and if you want a matrix of the random numbers suppose you want a matrix of size 5 cross 5 filled with the random numbers we can use this again rand function with argument 5 comma 5 it creates a 5 cross 5 uh, random matrix so here it has displayed the random matrix it has generated now instead of all the times uh, generate instead of uh, getting the random numbers in the interval 0 1 you may be interested in getting random numbers which are integers maybe in some range suppose you want to generate a random numbers in the interval 0 sorry 1 to 100 and you want 10 such numbers you can use this randint function and uh, uh, whatever the value you get if you print you will see that i have gotten some 10 numbers here which are between 1 to 100 and uh, these are like a randomly generated okay so this uh, random function is going to be very useful for us if you want to uh, generate later 
samples according to a given inverse given function if you recall we said that if you are want to generate a sample according to a function f let us assume that f is invertible then uh, you can apply this f inverse on this uniformly generated random variables and uh, whatever uh, the transform numbers you get they are distributed as per your required uh, distribution function. Operations on the matrix is also very straightforward in Python. So, some of the operations we do in uh, matrix are we want to multiply them or invert them or do the transpose them they can be easily accomplished. Suppose if you have this uh, two matrix A and B and now uh, you want to take a dot product between them all you need to do is NP dot and pass on these two matrices A comma B A and B it will give you the uh, multiplication and if you want to transpose all you need to do is A dot T actually this is straightforward you do not need even numpy for that to do the transpose you can simply put uh, A dot T and if you also want to do inversion of that so we are going to use the inverse function available in the linear algebra part of the numpy library and you are going to use this function. So, let us execute this. Uh, so, you can just verify that if you multiply this you are going to get this matrix and it is clear that uh, the transpose of this matrix uh, maybe should I maybe I will just print uh, uh, A and B here for better visualization. Yeah, so this is one matrix for us and this is another matrix and uh, it is clear that if I have to transpose I will get this and if I have to inverse I will get this. Now, Python also helps us to provide some functions which we can call by passing certain arguments. It is not that we have to use all the time the inbuilt functions, we can write our own function and as x first exercise here we are writing our first function. So, the function is going to do a factorial of a given number, find a factorial of a given number. So, to define a function I have to follow the syntax define factorial n and now n is the argument it is going to take. Here the actual computation of the factorial is working. So, I will start with a variable which I am initialized to 1 and as long as this number n is greater than 1 this variable is going to get multiplied with itself and uh, this n is keep on decrementing and obviously when n reaches value 1 this comes out and uh, you see that n is multiplied by with all the values less than n up to 1 and that is exactly the factorial of n and when this is completed it will return me the value of fact that is the factorial of the number n that I have passed. And uh, we can make it so let us execute let us understand what we are doing here like first here I am giving as input and now whatever the input I am going to give I am going to convert it to integer and then going to pass it to my factorial function and that is going to compute the factorial of that and give me. So, see now when I executed this cell 32 it say, said an error because I have not yet executed this cell previous cell where I have defined my factorial function. Let me execute this first and then execute this. Now, see it is asking me let us say I want to compute the factorial of 8 and now it has computed its value to be this much. Okay. So, here I could have written this same step by dividing into three parts. First, I have asked okay, enter a number 
then stored it in some number and then converted in the second line I, I could have converted it into integer and in the third line I would have passed that number to the factorial function instead of that I could do everything in one line and uh, and achieve the same thing okay so that is another thing very handy here when we want to play with all uh, I mean when we want to compress uh, or we want to write a very short codes uh, this kind of uh, writing this concatenated commands uh, are very handy